Shalom brothers and sisters. So I found a really interesting one for you now this week as well. Greece and Turkey. Tensions on the brink of open conflict. Now a lot of people don't talk about this because they're both supposed to be good little NATO members on the same side and the same team. But these two have been at each other's throat for a very long time. And in line with wars and rumors of wars, this is right up in there and no one's really talking about it or mentioning it. We're focused on Ukraine and China and Taiwan, North Korea, South Korea, Japan, Iran, Israel. Greece and Turkey could be a surprise. A country is threatening war with its European neighbor as tensions between the nations reach boiling point. The world's gone crazy. Russia's invaded Ukraine. China's got designs on Taiwan and the Himalayas and every island within 2000 gays. Now Turkey is threatening war with Greece. We can come suddenly one night if you Greeks go too far, then the price will be heavy, said Erdogan. Tensions between both countries are so high that international affairs analysts are warning a military clash is a real possibility in the Asian or Eastern Mediterranean. That would immediately trigger a wider conflict. Turkey and Greece are both members of the NATO alliance, but the specter of a conflict rooted in prehistoric Homeric tales of the siege of Troy could become the greatest threat to its stability yet. Turkey's autocratic leader is facing an election, but many of his people are unhappy after 20 years of arrests of teachers, judges, public officials, and so on. Anyone against him. Rallying nationalistic sentiments could help him win. So pushing for a war with Greece can actually rally the troops and get them all behind him for his election. Greece's Prime Minister, Kyriakos Mitsotakis, I'm probably butchering his name, is facing an election as well. He was elected in 2019, but due to high unemployment and huge national debt, hugely challenging position that he's sitting in. Meanwhile, social unrest is simmering beneath the surface and rallying nationalistic sentiments will help him win. The islands you occupy do not bind us. We will do what is necessary when the time comes, said Mr. Erdogan, threatening in front of a fervent crowd in August. Like we always say, we will come suddenly one night. Now the U.S. has signed a new defense cooperation agreement with Athens. Washington has become increasingly worried about Erdogan's behavior. He's become increasingly pro-Putin. Duh. He's fanning the flames of ultra-nationalism. He's exploiting extremist Islamic and anti-Western ideologies. The dispute is rooted in the depths of history between Greece and Turkey. We warn Greece to stay away from dreams, statements and actions that will lead to regret as it did a century ago and return to its senses, said Mr. Erdogan. He was referring to an event 100 years ago where Greece invaded Western Turkey and was defeated. This goes back to there and beyond, and they still remember all these things. These are festering differences and divisions. The resulting Treaty of Lausanne established their current borders, but bickering over the boundaries began after World War II and Turkey's invasion of Cyprus in 1974. The nations have been on the brink of war three times in the following 15 year, 50 years. The most recent standoff in 1996 due to ownership of the uninhabited Asian rock of Lumia. At stake is access to oil and gas reserves and fishing stocks. So again, maritime agreements like the Lebanon-Israel situation. In 2019, the navies of the two NATO allies faced off for months after Turkey sent a survey ship into waters that international law defines as Greek. But Ankara has expanded its scope to claim sovereignty over large inhabited Greek islands, including Rhodes, Kos and Lesbos. And that's resulted in renewed standoffs between the two nations' air forces and navies. The islands on which Greek, Greece sits unlawfully and unfairly are our rights, said Erdogan. The Greeks should not test our patience. If you want to be driven to the sea once again, 
tell us and we will throw them all in god willing so those are war words as turkey will not resign its rights in the Aegean, it will not hesitate either to make use of its rights arising from international treaties on the issue of islands demilitarization mr erdogan the athens government retorted saying greek is known as the language of reason freedom and justice the tactics turkey has chosen do not fall under any of these categories the latest escalation of tensions began after turkey alleged that one of its fighter jets probing greek airspace around the island of crete was radar locked by an anti-aircraft missile system like what did they think was going to happen look at history mr erdogan warned in september if you cross the line you will pay a heavy price don't forget Izmir. Greek forces were defeated in the Turkish mainland in the coastal city in 1922. Greek Prime Minister Mitsotakis paints the crisis as a clash between democracy and autocracy. Then Erdogan again threatens Greece. This is the most recent one. New missile has Athens within its range. Turkey's President Recep Erdogan threatened Greece on Wednesday this week, claiming that the newly tested ballistic missile has Athens within its range. Speaking during a joint live broadcast on the ATV and Harbour channels, Erdogan referred to the ballistic missile Typhoon, claiming it had frightened Greece. Amid renewed tension between the two neighbours, Erdogan warned Greece it must come to its senses. Greece needs to come to its senses. They must learn that provocation and instigation will get them nowhere. So he's constantly saying they need to come to their senses, but it sounds very much like he needs to come to his. Besides the point, does that sound to you like everything's fine and well and healthy in NATO at the moment? These two are going to come to blows and fast because Erdogan and Turkey, who are the Trojan horse, playing the NATO side, but actually on the Russian side, are going to play their hands sooner than later. And if you listen to his war quotes and his words and his speeches, he's pushing and saying out loud what's coming very, very soon. And then the question you've got to ask yourself is, is Greece ready for something like that? Can they handle it? Do they think that the rest of NATO is going to come to their aid at any time? If they look at the situation in Ukraine over the last year, are they alone? Can they do this? Are they going to have to stand down? They can't evacuate their islands. That'll be a death knell to his political career anyway. So coming back to my point, wars and rumors of wars. And this is all part of the process of living on the very edge of eternity. So keep your eyes on the Greece-Turkey situation as well. Keep looking up. We fly soon. God bless and shalom.